especially for John Hanna, Lyra McKee, and Philomena Canning. Make some noise! so much for marching with us on the 8th March for Choice um, and the first March for Choice in an Ireland that provides abortion. Last year we had an incredible victory. We repealed the 8th. It was about so much more than abortion. It was about our bodily autonomy and it marked some progress in making this country a better place to live in. But all of us gathered here know that this was only the first step and that there is a long way to go. We know that this battle is far from over. Our adversaries, those people who want to strip people of their dignity, their agency and their human rights want us to stop now. They want us to, they want to take away our rights, but we aren't stopping and we aren't going away. We in the abortion rights campaign and all of us here today must keep campaigning, keep pushing, keep marching to get the health care we want, and then we keep marching to protect it. We will keep marching as part of a global pro-choice community, a community that has to fight against a constant attack on reproductive rights across the world, rights that can be so easily taken away. We see our global comrades' struggles, we share a bond. Today we march in solidarity with Argentina, with Poland, El Salvador, Colombia, Paraguay, Ecuador, South Korea. Today we march in solidarity with Malta, who are having their first ever March for a Choice. Just eight years ago we held our first March for Choice. Malta, we achieved the impossible and so will you. Yet. In Ireland, people still have to travel. Many are still bleeding in airports. Many are still stigmatized. Many are still exiled by a country and a government that cares little for our health care and our autonomy. If you are past 11 weeks and three days, you cannot get an abortion here. If your diagnosis of fatal fetal abnormality is not definitive enough, you can't get an abortion here. And if you live in Northern Ireland, you can't get an abortion. Where is the care for domestic abuse victims who have to go great lengths to see their doctor twice in three days because we cannot be trusted to make decisions about our bodies? Where is the change for the person who was strung along by a rogue crisis pregnancy agency? What about people in direct provision and emergency accommodation who don't have any privacy as they have their abortions? Where is the support for migrants who have to face extra hurdles of visas, bureaucracy and systemic racism? What of people in rural areas where doctors are allowed to refuse abortion and healthcare to their patients? This isn't what we voted for and it isn't good enough. The failures in our abortion provision intersect with many other inequalities that, people, that are forced upon people and we're about to hear from some of the people who face with them. So let us all send a message to the government. We're still watching and we're still fighting. The election is coming and we won't forget people who have forgotten us. The politicians are happy to celebrate their progressiveness off the back of hard work of decades of activism in Ireland. We aren't going back in our boxes. We aren't done fighting. We're marching today because we want free, safe, legal, local access to abortion for anyone who wants to need it. That has never changed. We will not stop until it's good enough. No one left behind. Um, <laughs> um, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Give it up for uh, Claire and Emma there. Next up, we have Alana Murray representing Disabled Women Ireland. Alana is a postgraduate student currently studying research in creative media, exploring disabled representation in Irish film. Having been awarded the title of Student Leader of the Year 2019, Alana completed a summer in Washington, D.C. as a part of the Washington Ireland Programme Class of 2019. They are passionate about disabled people's rights, 
reproductive rights for all pregnant people and our co-founding member of Disabled Women Ireland. Please give it up for Alana Murray, everybody. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's an honour to be here today speaking in front of an unreal crowd. I'm sure that there are many battle weary faces among us and I just want to acknowledge that. Those who, whose chiefs still remember the feeling of the polite smiles when we had to face my mind is made up. Or the bitten tongues when on the receiving end of vitriol, whose hearts still remember the heaviness for people who gave their traumas, their vulnerabilities and their voices to the movement, whose nerves still associate bright pink with conflict. Disabled people remember too. We remember politicians being given national platforms to say that we never would have been born without the Eighth Amendment, that we should be grateful. Oh no. Hold on. Give me a minute. <laughs> There we go. We remember building our own platforms to reclaim our voices and take back the narrative being written without our consent. We had a choice to make and we chose yes. We still do not have equal access to services. Deaf pregnant people are left unable to access the My Option service because of an inaccessible phone line. The wait period and necessity for multiple GP visits mean that disabled people are often unable to organise transport, PAs and thus still in crisis. Disabled people of colour and disabled trans people are still at risk, being forced to navigate ableism on top of rampant racism and transphobia for medical professionals charged with providing care. Our legislation is incomplete. We cannot ignore the intersections of identity in our activism. If we're not fi fighting for everyone, we're failing each other and ourselves. We stand on the cusp of a new dawn in Irish history, but with every new dawn, a shadow can be cast. One of those shadows is the inequality still embedded within reproductive healthcare in this country. Look around you, you could be stood among friends, among strangers, Either way, something brought you here today, and it brought you together to be part of a collective power. Every moment, every second in history started with one person. Who's to say that that person isn't you? Also note the people that are missing at the meetings, on the panels, on the stages. Seek them out and collaborate towards a diverse and inclusive movement. Celebrate your victories, but recognize the work that is still being done around you. Ask how you can help. Lend your voices once again as you did before. The time for respectability is over. We know what needs to be done. And I dare anyone to try and stop us. Thank you. Choice Derry. So, yeah, I know! <laughs> so, will you give it up for Bethany Moore and Danielle Farron. I'll tell you a quick bit about them before I said that weird thing at the start. Bethany Moore is an abortion rights activist with Alliance for Choice Derry. She is a proud feminist and current law student at Queen's University Belfast, particularly interested in reproductive justice and women's rights. Danielle Farron is a climate activist who has recently set up a swap shop called Nellie's Clothing Shop in Derry. She's an abortion rights activist with Alliance for Choice Derry because she believes that you know what's best for you. Please give it up for Bethany Moore and Danielle Farron. We're all, hello, sorry, I'm short. <laughs> we are all here today, joined in power and celebration the decriminalization of abortion is on the horizon for the North, and here the eighth is no more. Ireland clearly believes in freedom for all pregnant people, 
but somehow we're still not fully there yet. Those in Antrim, Armagh, Derry, Down, Fermanagh and Tyrone still wait for choice! In 2018, 1,053 women from these counties had to travel to England just to access healthcare that they should have had here. Those in Kilkenny still wait for certain hospitals to help them make decisions on the process of deciding to do with their, with their own body. There are those all throughout Ireland who still have to endure the tyranny of others who want to deny us our rights. We say no more. No more of their horrid images, no more of their horrid words. Not in city centres, not on billboards and not outside hospital doors. We are the majority! The people of Ireland are still being let down by improper legislation and a failure to act from those in power. Waiting periods of three days are medically unnecessary and they're not good enough! These waiting periods have been known to increase second trimester abortions by 62%. These periods cause added harm to women suffering from domestic abuse, those in direct provision and those in rural settings. Exclusion zones were promised to be a priority, but still they have been deemed redundant. No one in this country or anywhere in the world for that matter should face being harassed and shamed at a hospital door. The 12 week limit is unattainable. More and more people slip through the cracks, failing to access abortion when needed. Free, safe, legal and local is the standard we want! Life is complicated, circumstances vary and decisions are not easy. We all need compassionate, accessible health care. Anything else is just not good enough. We won't go back to being shamed, we won't go back to being stigmatised, but we still need to move forward. Better care is needed for rural women, for migrants, for trans and disabled people. We are here to say reproductive freedom is for every single person. We are here to say, and we are here to say, that no one is going to be left behind. I think I've got it all right folks, thanks for having us today. A law created in 1861 before the light bulb was invented is what is restricting the reproductive rights of us individuals in the North. This law is not only dehumanizing but also strips away the individualization of each person who should be allowed to make the conscious decision of what is best for them. The government nor anyone else has the right to interfere with an individual's body. Illegal abortions result in a lot more fatalities, with many unwanted pregnancies resulting in economic deprivation and ongoing poverty and despair. We also have to remember those women who are marginalised due to their immigration status or cultural background, or who are in domestic violence situations and can't travel. These and many other factors mean women are often forced to seek other options. According to NI Life and Time survey, when asked do you agree that abortion should be a matter for medical regulation and not criminal law? 82% of people agreed. Similarly, in 2018, 89% of people agreed a woman should never have to go to prison for having an abortion. So why are us individuals in these six counties still being restricted to this Victoria era legislation? Democracy must be acknowledged. From Derry to Sturban, Oma to Enniskillen, we will no longer be controlled by armed patriarchies. We will not go back to the laundries or seek health care in the back streets. We demand free, safe, legal abortion without apology. No one left behind. Amazing. Our last speakers are trans activists, Sam Blackensy and Albert Sabir Albert Sabir Albert Saberio. Yay, I'm so sorry. Um, Sam is a trans activist who's been involved in the trans community since 2012. They're a non binary trans person who's been involved in, with Tenny and with the Irish Trans Support Alliance over the years. 
Now working with other marginalised communities, Sam continues to try to be in, as intersectional in their work. Uh, brilliant. And then Albert is a Honduran non-binary artist, facilitator and sex educator based in Ireland. They are a co-founder and co-director of Gender Adopt RIP, a trans-led, anti-capitalist, multidisciplinary art collective. Their work explores gender, sexual violence, the Central American diaspora and trauma. They recently were a part of the judge panel for Fringe Festival. Please give it up! For the, fa for the past five years, and the two referendum campaigns I've worked on, I was told to hide who I was for the greater good. Last year, Together for Yes, like Yes Equality before them, decided that trans and non-binary people were too complicated to include in their campaign documents. We hope that they would be like Yes Equality and at least ensure that we are included in the legislation. But that was not the case. Instead, when the Get Together for Yes campaign was told their policy paper and the draft legislation wouldn't include us, they ignored us. Right now, the legislation for the regulation of the termination of pregnancy does not include all people who can become pregnant, just the ones who aren't too complicated. The theme of today is no one left behind, but we've already been left behind. The fight for reproductive rights is a struggle against misogyny and will always be a struggle against misogyny. And I guess our story confuses that. So Together for Yes decided that our lives were too complicated for you to support. All forms of healthcare are an issue for trans people. To access medical transition, we go through an 18 month waiting list to access a service that does not believe us when we tell them our identities. We go to GPs with routine conditions and I refuse treatment because we are trans and that illness might be affected by being trans. Our conversations go something like, I have a broken arm. And the doctor will go, oh, it must be because of your hormones. Or, I need to know everything about your hormones and surgeries before I can treat you, your broken arm. It results in other illnesses being missed and undue stress. The same phenomenon applies to mental and sexual healthcare. Last week, a man in the UK lost a case to be recognised as the father of the child that he gave birth to. His gender is le legally male, but it was ruled that because he gave birth, he was a mother. His gender was something to be overridden because of his reproductive choices. Aren't these arguments familiar to you? Isn't this about self-determination and bodily autonomy? Isn't this a struggle that should be fought by us and together? I think that possibly a better theme for today might be atonement. Last year, Together for Yes, made up of three organizations, made tactical decisions that have resulted in human rights being given to the many and leaving behind the most vulnerable members of our society who may need abortions. Last year, the organization who should have been standing for trans people, Tenny, only mentioned the referendum and asked for people to vote yes on the last day of, of the campaign. Trans people were entirely failed from all angles. <laughs> trans people need legislation to regulate abortions to be amended to include us and all others who can get pregnant. We need you to stand with us and to not rest until you have righted the wrong that was done and is being done to trans people and other minority groups. We need you to support our access to general, trans-specific, sexual and reproductive health care. So we, like all those who need reproductive justice, can have bodily autonomy and self-determination. Thank you. First of all, I just want to give a cheer for Oaxaca because Oaxaca is one of the second Mexican departments to legalize abortion. So maybe about six years, no, 
five years ago, I went to a Need for Abortion campaign event and I performed a poem where I told everybody, hey, don't forget about people who aren't like you. And the fact is nothing has changed. Um, so no one left behind, we've been chanting this, but the ones who came up with the logo and were screaming it last year were actually forgotten. The ones who told you from the beginning not to suppress us further, to listen to us, a symptom of tokenization is present today when we were only asked about this properly the last few days. So that's a symptom of asking when you realize that you forgot minorities at the end, when at the start we should be involved from the start, organizational level or nothing. As of this day, many people still do not have access to abortion services because of decisions, tactical decisions, that aren't and together for yes made. Um, there's a necessity now to travel due to the three day waiting period. You have to do two travels, which is practically impossible for people in direct provision, people who need uh, time off from work, um, people who are undocumented and people who are re reliant on visas. If you're not aware, the GNIB has been having a problem with giving appointments which means that people might spend six to 12 months waiting on an appointment, which means they can't go to the doctor to get an abortion because they're afraid they will be deported. That is not acceptable. In addition to this, the website myoptions.ie is only available in uh, English and Irish. So there is a distinct language barrier there for anybody who's trying to access information from any other language as well as we have the presentation of conscientious objection, which we told you about. Merge mentioned you this, the other groups mentioned you this, that conscientious objection means that any doctor can say, no, I am not gonna give you an abortion. We are failing every single person in the rural areas when we do this, because they don't have access to many GPs and with the lack of public transport, we this is again, unacceptable. Non-binary, trans, and intersex folk already live on the margins of society, and we need to stand for all of our siblings. You can't just say no one left behind when people have already been left behind. 39% of trans people have attempted suicide at least once. Have a think about that. But, but Sam is saying this is the same struggle. It's a struggle about body power and having control over yourself without having any actual medical fact a lot of trans mass people, any trans person with a uterus, can be forced into a hysterectomy after five years of taking hormones. Again, an issue where we don't have any control over our reproductive system. And there is a huge, there was a huge difference between legislation and the actual campaign because we were told that even saying people was too hard because only women can get pregnant, and that is incorrect. More than women can get pregnant. And I saw a really fantastic sign, I don't know where they've gone, but it says, I don't need a uterus to care about abortion because I have a heart. And um, I saw them somewhere over there. Yes. Um, and what I want to say to the end, for finishing up, is that by remaining closer to the myth mythical Middle Ireland that doesn't tolerate my complicated identity of being a disabled person, of being a queer person, of being a migrant, of being somebody with multiple things that affect me, it's too difficult, too complicated, you are actively harming the people who are most marginalized. You acknowledge that you excluded marginalized voices and it was because you thought you knew better than us because we live the reality of consequences from your actions. It is not brave that you chant no one left behind when you did not do anything to change that in the past when you should have been doing it. It was easier for you to not lose votes over including trans, non-binary folk, migrants, disabled folk, you used our names to chant like Savita and honor, but you didn't listen to the migrant women in your lives in Dublin alive at the time. You show through your actions, you have shown how you really how you really feel. And perhaps maybe this Middle Ireland is just your projections of misogyny, transphobia, and racism. So maybe check yourself. I'm so sick and tired of white Irish feminism doing the same hierarchies of racism, ableism, and transphobia you claim to hate so much. So, in the words from one of your own articles, bad faith is corrosive to bad movements, aka, we don't like it when people criticize us when we had information beforehand, do better. And next year, let's make sure that this march doesn't have to happen.